Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Delmico L. Cunningham, better known as Dr. Media. So, ZBrush. Yes, I know. I have said many times over that I do not enjoy this program's interface. And I don't, but I still know how to use ZBrush. One of the things that we talk about, or we've talked about on the channel before, is that probably all in all I have over 30 to 40 different digital content creation programs in my repertoire even if you do not personally love a program if it's something within your industry that is used I suggest that you learn it and know it well enough to be able to use it because you never know when you'll go work somewhere or work on a project and you know you're asked to work on a ZBrush model and if you don't know how to use ZBrush then you're kind of screwed right so I believe in knowing how to use multiple programs that's that's just me and it's served me well pretty far so one of the questions that I usually get is how do I get my poly painting out of ZBrush so that I can use it in something else. So what I'm going to do for this tutorial is I'm going to show you how to use this demo um, model from ZBrush and get it so that you can use this in something like Marmoset to actually show off your model or even use it in something like uh, Unreal or whatever else. So basically the way that we're going to do this, you can export your model, be able to import that into Maya, import your textures and everything will be gravy. So one of the first things that I need to do is that when you poly paint, you have to understand how, how ZBrush is different when it comes to texturing your model. When you're poly painting, you are not painting on a texture map. You're actually using the individual vertices of the model to store color. It's like vertex painting. So it's, it's poly painting. You're, you're painting on the polygons of your model. You're actually painting directly onto those polygons. So unlike most people think, you can get this information out of ZBrush. This information can be used in other places. Now, one of one couple of thing, couple of things, and a couple of couple of things when we start to think about generating UVs for this. Now, ZBrush generates UVs based on its own algorithm. Now, I would suggest that you do your UVing before you pose your character. So this is not a great example because this character is already posed and it's going to give us problems. I already know because I've done this, this character before and it does give problems in certain areas because of the way that it is already posed. Now you can break your model up into polygroups and by breaking your model up into individual polygroups you're basically breaking it up into individual UV shells. So if you want UVs to look a certain way, you can break them up into individual polygroups and then do that uh, inside of ZBrush and actually get your UVs based off of the polygroups. Now I'm not going to do that method today. I'm going to do this quick, dirty, and mean. So let's start. So the first thing I want to do is go to my subtool panel. And I've got a couple of subtools in here. So I have like the main body, the eyes, the teeth the uh, kimono, the lace, the taping and belt and the shoes. So I want to come down here and say all low. So I'm going to say all low. Click on all low and everything goes down to the lowest version of itself. So this is the low, the low version. And if you're going to do your poly groups, I would suggest that you select, you do your poly group selection at this level, at the very low level is where you want to do your poly group selection. Not at the highest level, but at this level, right? So this is your poly. And what I want to do is I want to come here to my Z plugins, and it is this is a plugin for uh, ZBrush, and I'm going to say UV Master. And what I'm going to see, what I'm going to say in here is I'm just going to come in here and just say unwrap all. And you can see that if I look at this, if I had poly groups, I could just say poly groups and just say unwrap all. So let's just do it with poly, because I think there are poly groups for this model. So I'm going to go ahead and say poly groups and say unwrap all. And let it unwrap and you'll see it bouncing down my layers and it's jumping down through here unwrapping everything so boom 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 the kimonos going through so everything's unwrapping the way it should and boom it's all unwrapped so now that it's all unwrapped I want to go ahead and say all high so everything's back to the high level 
And with everything still high, this is what I want to do. I need to be able to go ahead and transfer my, my texture maps at this level so that I can have high res texture maps. Because remember, we talked about your painting is not really on a texture sheet right now, it's on the actual polygons. So all the painting and, and, and shaders and everything we see on our earthquake model right now, they're actually stored at the highest subdivision level of my model. So I need to get all of that stuff. I need to get that stuff off of it. So I can come here and I will say that I want to export the texture map. So I can go here and say texture. And I'm going to say create. And I'm going to say new from polypaint. So new from polypaint. There it is. And then you also want to say clone texture. And that will clone your texture to your texture panel. So you can see it there it sits right now. There it is. There's him laid flat. So I've got that one piece. So we need to do it for all the other sub tools. So I'm going to go do it for the eyes. So one by one, you have to do this. Go texture map, new from poly paint, clone texture. And let's do the next sub tool. So teeth and texture map <laughs> from poly paint clone texture that's the thing that kind of sucks you gotta do this for all your pieces every last piece has to be laid down into a texture map and say new for poly paint and that looks okay and then clone texture next sub tool Lace, texture map, new from texture, or new from poly paint, and then clone texture. And same thing, keep going. So you've got to do all your individual pieces. This gets kind of tiring, but it's just the way that it's done. That's why I don't love uh, getting my, my painting off of stuff inside of ZBrush. So texture map, new from poly paint, clone texture, sub tool here, new from poly paint, and new from poly paint, and clone texture. So you have to do that for every one of your textures, one by one by one by one. So to get these out, all you would have to do is select that texture and then export it. Select that texture, export it. Let select this texture, export it. This one, export it. This one, export it. This one, export it. So you need to do that for all your pieces. The other thing that you need to do is that you also need to do your normal maps. So normal maps, I can come in here, but when you do your normal maps, if we click on if I click on create normal right now, it's going to tell me that I have to be at a lower level subdivision to be able to generate my normal maps. So I'm going to go back to my subtool panel and just say all low and go down here to normal map and we're going to do the same thing create normals create some clone normal map so you're going to do the same thing you're going to clone your normal maps and everything else so sub tool click on my belt same thing normal maps create normal clone texture so you're going to do this for everything so as I go through this all my sub tools are you know just just doing the same process over and over again so create make sure you clone it you have to make sure you clone those textures to the texture panel or they won't they won't be saved you'll just have that little texture sitting there and it's not really saved anywhere uh, normal map so create normal map clone normal map I really wish there were like an auto way uh, on a, a fully truly fully automated way to uh, get all these guys out so normal map create normal clone normal and I'm going to show you how you can actually export all this at one time and not have to deal with exporting them all separately because some people end up doing that too they're like oh, I need to export all these I'm going to export them all separately and I'm like oh Jesus don't do that don't do that that's horrible it's horrible guys horrible it's horrible don't do that so normal map create normal clone and then one more. This is for his body. And let's say we want to normal map. Create normal map. Give it time. 
clone on my map. Yay! So the way I export these, I want to actually ex export these um, with a Z plugin, which is the FBX exporter importer. So I'm going to click on the exporter importer, and I have I have found the best way to export these is for your FBX exporter importer. You're going to say all, so you're going to export everything, so all the sub tools, and then make sure it's FBX 2014. And then make sure it's an ASIC file and not a binary file, but make sure it's an ASIC file. And you can export blend layers if you need to. You can even export the, the maps and embed them. And then you can also choose a, uh, a map type. So right now I'll just do mine as targets. And then I'm just going to have smooth normals. So leave it on smooth normals and 16 bit TIFFs. And I'm just going to say export. So go to export. I'm just going to do this on the desktop. I actually have an earthquake. And we're going to do this and save and then export. And you'll see one by one by one things will be exported. If you look over here at the texture, you can see what's being exported. So everything's being exported out. And you'll see right here switching to subtool 2 eyes. So the eyes are being exported out. The teeth, the teeth are being exported out. So everything's being exported out. The nice thing is, is that with the export, it's actually flipping the UVs the right way. So the UVs and everything like that are being flipped. And I don't have to do all that because for whatever reason, ZBrush makes your UVs the wrong way. And they're just, they're just weird. I don't know why it does that, but it does. So all my, all my pieces are coming out and files exported. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually set this up to show in Marmoset. So there's Marmoset Toolbag. Open up Marmoset Toolbag. And I'm going to go in here and say Import Model. And go to my Earthquake folder. And there's my model. And everything came out with it. So it's all exported. And... There's my model, and there's the ID. So I'm going to go here and say, where is it? Albedo. And I'm going to go ahead and get my earthquake texture. So there's my earthquake texture. And then open. Now, what you'll see, at least here inside of here inside of Marmoset is that when Marmoset brings this in, it only brings in one material because the material, it was it was only one material coming out of um, ZBrush. So you have to make the other material. It's not a big deal. So I'm going to make dupl I'm gonna make another material. I'm going to say new and come in here and just make one for shoes. New. This one's gonna be kimono and then new this one's gonna be lace and then new this one's gonna be taping so basically I'm just making a model for er I'm making a shader for everything that was brought in so eyes and then new uh, teeth And then new, I think one more, and this one would be for the belt. I think that's the only one I have not made. And it's fine, I can still make more if I need to. So there's Earthquake, he's sitting there. So for the eyes, I'm going to take this shader and drag it on top of the eyes. And kimono, I'm going to drag that on top of the kimono. And then lace on top of lace. And then teeth on top of teeth and taping on taping so you can see everything's changing now so it's not like really weird and kinda odd looking so shoes on top of shoes and then belt on top of belt so belt so now the other pieces are they're still they're still the way they should look so I'm gonna go to belt and also go in here to albedo and let's find my belt texture 
So there's my belt texture. Now everything has a normal map to it as well, so we'll be applying the normal maps too. So I'm going to go ahead and do the normal map for the belt. So there's my belt normal map, and you can see it looks, you know, it looks like it's supposed to. It's got normal maps, it's got normals on it. It looks as though it's been, some stuff has been done to it, but it's just the uh, normals. And I'm going to turn down the reflectivity on my model and the Frenzel, the Frenzel index. And there we go. Because I don't have a specular map. All right, so same thing on earthquake. So I'm going to go to him and turn down the specular intensity. Let's give him a little bit because he does have skin, so he does ha he does need some. And let's turn on his normal map as well for him. So there's his normal map. And for his eyes, we're going to do the same thing because now he's like soulless. He's got like I'm soulless right now. So I'm just going to get his eye texture. There's his eye texture, and then. We get his normal maps for the eye texture. And let's turn down that specularity on those eyes. And same thing for the kimono, albedo. If you're not familiar with the new way of PBR shading, uh, you'll know that the diffuse texture has been replaced by albedo texture. So that's the thing, that's it's albedo now and not diffuse. And normal map for the kimono. So that looks good and this is my low poly model so it, you know it's it's uh this is the low poly version this is the low the low version so there's my lace texture and there's a normal map for it so lace normal once again turn down that specular intensity now if you were doing this inside of Maya you would do the same thing you would just import your model make different shaders for your model and then that's it the only reason why I brought it into Marmoset is because we're setting this up to a game for a game model, and I wanted to show that you actually can bring a game model out of ZBrush, uh, and it be you know be what it is. Now the things, some of the things that I do not like about the way ZBrush works, because you most people know that follow my channel know that I'm not a huge fan of of the interface of ZBrush. I think the interface could be spiffed up a little bit. Um, and and uh, some people would disagree because they're like, well, you can customize the interface. Well, I shouldn't feel like I'm in a foreign I'm in foreign territory just because I'm using a different program uh, than most people use. And that's kind of how ZBrush feels to me. It feels like a foreign like a foreign program at times. It doesn't feel connected to how it should be for a content creation program. Um, and the perfect example of that is even just getting my textures and stuff out. Like there should be a button that just lets me say export model kinda like oh I don't know 3D Coat does 3D Coat says export model and choose the maps you want to export and you're done it doesn't take like 15 minutes to export out models and, and texture and all those other things so I you know I, I know it's nitpicking but it's time is money you know and the more time you spend it's just you just get you get kinda ticked off and you're mad angry Looks like the unwrapping inside of here, un unwrapping inside of uh, ZBrush did okay. I don't really love what happened here on his pants legs, but I think that's more so the fact that he uh, he actually was already posed when he was exported out. So I'm going to also turn on subdivision. So right here for subdivision, I'm going to say P in triangles. And turn that on and try to tinselate him some. Uh, he doesn't have really enough. Let's just turn that, say none. So, the one thing that I like about Marmoset is that Marmoset lets you quickly choose um, different lighting setups. So, if I go here to Sky, I can go to Presets and I can choose somewhere else to put him. And you'll see he looks, he works kind of well. So I'm going to turn down this intensity on the specular just a little bit more because he's kind of shiny. He's really shiny. So let's put him in a cathedral. Yeah, maybe. A field. You know. Castle. That looks good. I like that. And I can bring some extra lights in here. So I'm just clicking on the, the actual image. And when you do that, that that brings up these uh, these children lights, and the child lights can be controlled. So you have brightness for the child lights and things of that nature. And I'm going to go to my camera, 
And in here, I'm going to activate the field of view. Well, not field of view, but my uh, my actual focus, my depth of field. And let's say focus distance. So, boop, there we go, near blur, that far blur is what I want, to kind of kick up, and bokeh size, it's something like that. So yeah, and then maybe I do some like tonal mapping to this. Uh, Put contrast. Maybe desaturate a little bit, and I can do a little vignette. So let's do like a little bit of a little bit of vignette around this, and then let's soften that vignette out. And I don't want any gain grain on this. Nah, that's good. That's good. That's good. You can also look at your renderer and you can turn on wireframe so you can see what the low poly wireframe is, which is nice. You can do ambient occlusion. So you can turn on ambient occlusion right here and you can turn the strength of that up. So I'm going to throw in some ambient occlusion and make it size a little bit tighter. And that's kind of it. And the only thing I want to do after that is just maybe set this to play and do a scene turntable and there you go so there is my ZBrush to Marmoset or ZBrush to anything actually so really what I've done is this model could be used inside of Maya and it could, it's already so it's set up right now to be used inside of you know 3D packages and that's just kind of it um, it's not really hard to be able to get your stuff out but you have to know inside of ZBrush you, you realistically have to know that you need to export out your normal maps export out your texture maps but then also clone them to those panels if you don't clone those maps then everything you've done is for naught <clears throat> so if you don't clone those maps um, into your texture panel then they won't export when you go to export your model and then if you're coming in the marmoset of course you have to make individual uh, materials in here which is not a big deal if you're going into Maya you'll have to do the same thing well actually yeah yeah and Maya you have to do the exact same thing you have to you know make your individual textures and apply them to the individual models because the thing about it when you think about this this model is not one piece it's individual pieces which is completely fine um, you know it can be all these individual pieces and still be fine but you can see my poly count is actually pretty low and nothing nothing's horrible it's it's all kind of nice oh the other thing you can do inside of here with your camera um, I think it's in here do 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 you can so I thought you could before maybe they took it out so they took it out. You used to be able to actually have do high res shadows. You used to be able to to actually set a floor inside of here. And I don't really see the floor now. Nope, those are post effects, lens flares, limits. No, I guess they took out the floor function. Eh not a huge thing I mean you know you still have that so you get you also can not add lights in here your own so I can go in here and add a light let's say I have a light like I want to do like a light right, like right here so I have a light that I'm gonna add and maybe this lights gonna be you know blue to set off his eyes right his eyes his beautiful blue eyes I can change the brightness of that and even change the distance that it goes. So this is kind of the fall off of my light. And you can change the the shape of it. Alright, so 
and you can also make a spotlight so you can come here and make this into a spot or directional or whatever you want the cool thing is that you can put these gels on top of it uh, you can use an image for a gel and actually um, just like you would on a actual real light you can have like a gel color and, and make your light kind of flow through that and yeah so there we go so if I go back in here to animation I can say play and and you see I'm doing a scene turntable so I'm turning the whole scene because you can do that in a really weird way and you you can't you can make the camera turn around and keep the model in place and the camera goes around so I could do this like this and actually make the camera kind of turn you know if you want it to or you could even make the 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 actual scene do a turn which keeps your model kind of stationary and then everything else moves or something like that yeah I would not suggest doing two of these at once because that's just insane so I usually do my scene turntable make sure everything is zeroed out and just do it as a scene and there we go you can see the normals are working well if I came back in here and went to render and hit wireframe I can actually see the wireframe of my model that uh... that lens affair that lens, <laughs> lens affair that lens effect is uh, quite prevalent. Let's change that far blur. There we go. Something like that, maybe. You can swirl the vignette. You can also change your aperture and rotate rotate your aperture. Your aperture of your camera as you do and you can also turn on flares they will they're gonna kill my render and you have other distortions in here you can do so I can do like chromatic affirmation everybody like this this is like this is like totally the uh the JJ Abrams setup chromatic admiration on everything so there you go and then my model is ready to show off to potential uh, you know employers and you can see it's low poly and you know it's ready to go like this is really low poly this is this is good this is this is nice it's nice right here it's nice now in another video I'll show you how to actually properly retopologize a model. This would be good for probably a mobile style game, honestly, because I've got high I've got really high res textures um and a really low poly low 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 poly model. This I would think would be more so for mobile um honestly cuz you can get a higher res model as far as topology goes than this earthquake model right now. Um so you can re you normally I would want to retopologize this and get a you know a nice looking model from the retopo um, but anyway hope this video has been useful for you and now you know how to get your models and your textures your poly paints out of Maya and be able to use them for other programs and if I look in here and actually go see my uh, folder if I go look at my earthquake folder you can see there's my model so it exported out my model and it still kept it broken up into pieces so the model is one model it looks like it's two megs so my model all is in there and then all of these texture maps came out separately which is kind of awesome which is what I needed so I could actually take this model into other things like oh I don't know something like uh, substance painter substance designer and make additional shaders or make, make additional uh, textures for it and then bring it back in here. Cool thing about um, Marmoset before we go is that you actually, and you can see from our presets, that it will actually use Quixel. So Quixel works well with this, and then also Unreal works well with this, but the um, Substance Designer shaders also work well inside of here. So you can do that you can actually so you can see you can import and I can actually import um, a substance 
so I can import a substance archive directly in here which is kind of neat that you can bring substances directly into um, Marmoset and Marmoset is a PBR real-time shader so it's already set up for uh, real-time shading inside of um, the viewport so that's kind of cool too so once again until next time I am Delmico L Cunningham better known as Dr. Media.